All right, welcome back to Tur Towns, the channel that shines a light on some of the lesser known places in the UK. But today, that doesn't really apply because it's a pretty well known place, the city of Bristol. Call this video an extra turd nugget, call it the full log, whatever you want to call it. But what I do need you to do is share and comment on this video, it really helps us out. I had plans to visit a county today and do a usual Turd Towns video, but I crashed my drone in Q-Stoke and it had to be sent off for repair. Don't worry, nobody was hurt, but it did slow down my output. So in the meantime, I thought it'd be interesting to visit the city of Bristol. Bristol is a place that's been in the news more than normal lately. As one of the few places in the UK where the Green Party is the biggest political party, there's definitely plans to make Bristol into an example. And the most notable feature of this example is the banning of polluting cars from Bristol city centre. This is very controversial, but it is happening in other cities too. If your car is deemed to be a polluter, you must pay extra to visit the city. But that's not all, that's on top of the already extortionate parking charges. So these two things together, a lot of people have stopped visiting Bristol. Myself, I hadn't been here for a few years, so I was interested to see how things had changed. Is the clean air zone killing the city of Bristol like a lot of people claim? Let me know your thoughts. And before we start the video properly, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to help Turd Towns thrive. Bristol is a pretty nice city. It's big too, with a population of around half a million. It's often called the fifth largest city in the UK, but the surrounding area is all fields, giving Bristol a smaller city feel. Despite its size and relative wealth, it has problems and they're only getting worse. Today's visit would have cost me £20 if I had a polluting car, including the parking. I don't think that's in any way acceptable that I have to pay out that much money before I've even done anything. We are in a cost of living crisis and this sort of thing isn't going to encourage people back to the city. Use public transport then I hear you say. Well that's fine if you live in the actual city, but commuters from nearby towns and villages are screwed. Buses are unreliable and they're normally expensive, although I do have to point out that they are doing this reduced £2 single fare thing for everyone until October, so thank you for that. But that doesn't stop the buses from being very slow and unreliable. So another option would be a train. Well, think better again. The main station Bristol Temple Meet is inconveniently located away from the shopping area. Although the walk isn't a bad one, it still took me around 15 minutes and I've got a big body, so it would take others longer. Yes, 15 minutes isn't a long walk, but you've probably already had to wait half an hour for a train on top of that. Maybe more. What, do you expect an old biddy to carry six shopping bags for a 15 minutes to a train? And plus, we don't all have the time to waste. The mayor, I'm going to come on to him later, but he decided to waste £15 million doing surveys to see if Bristol can have an underground railway. It'll never happen, complete waste of money. Major infrastructure just doesn't get built in Bristol. So you're screwed, but don't worry. Once you're in Bristol, there is one other form of incredibly popular transport. The e-scooter. These are everywhere in Bristol, just my doubt you'll get knocked over by one. So due to all the poor transport options and costs to enter Bristol, people in the commuter towns choose to go to Cribs Causeway, which is an out-of-town shopping centre. It's no better than shopping in Bristol, but the parking is free and it's not in a clean air zone, so it just makes sense. If you visit Bristol as a tourist, don't be confused. The area called The Centre is a complete waste of time. There aren't any shops here, it's just for drinking and buying kebabs. Whilst you're here, you can stare at the pits of the non-existent water fountains, or perhaps take in the rock that used to contain the statue of Edward Colston. Other than that, you've wasted your time coming here. The shopping area of Bristol is called Broadmead, and that's the area we're interested in today. I arrived at 9am thinking that was appropriate, only to find that most of the shops don't open till 10am. Wow, they must really want your business. I realised we were slightly botching this experiment, so we came back later in the day. It was slightly busier but not much to report on. The first place I visited was the Gallery Shopping Centre. To be honest, I can't believe that this thing even still exists. Built in 1991, this was the main place to come until 2008 when a new shopping area called Cabot Circus was built. That meant a lot of the better shops moved to the new shopping centre. This place is now completely irrelevant. You would never need to come here. You've got a mixture of empty shops, community spaces, charity shops and art galleries. Minus Waterstones, if you live in Bristol, you will only ever walk through here as a means of a shortcut. Since the virus, the gallery's business is down 35% and shows no chance of recovery. Have they tried putting a shop here perhaps that someone might actually want to visit? Well, this place is doomed because last year it was announced that the galleries will be knocked down in the next two years. It's going to be replaced with coffee shops, student accommodation and offices. 
The council have given up and they will now destroy the five acre site. Essentially, there's nothing even wrong with the site. They will have cafes facing Castle Park, which is going to create a nice atmosphere. Have the morons in charge ever visited Castle Park? It's full of crackheads and people sleeping in tents. What a lovely atmosphere that must be, sipping your coffee whilst Terry the Toothless Tramp asks for your change. And anyway, there's already so many areas of Bristol filled with bars and restaurants, like the waterfront, Park Street and the centre. But Mayor Marvin Rees doesn't see a problem with it. So when the galleries closes, presumably all of these people are going to be out of work, because they're not going to be able to afford the rent over at Cabot Circus. Between the old gallery shopping centre and the new Cabot Circus shopping centre, you've got shopping streets, which all sort of meet in the middle of a circle. It used to be alright here, but once again, the empty shops are everywhere. So it's clearly not just a problem with the galleries, and we can expect an announcement that this area of Broadmead will be knocked down to in around five years. Other than the closed down shops, the main problem is the homeless people. These are not your typical homeless people either. These people are super aggressive, pushy and in your face. Walking through Bristol almost feels like being in one of those countries with the persistent shopkeepers who lock you in the shop until you buy something. Maybe the galleries can learn a thing or two from them. This area is now the playground of the homeless and they group together and intimidate anyone walking past. It's not exactly a place that you'd want your grand to be walking alone. Often these people stomp up to you demanding money. It's not a nice environment here, why would anyone want to experience this? This area used to be overlooked by the towering Debenhams building. And it's obviously not Boroughmead's fault that Debenhams as a business failed. But this building has been empty since 2019 and nobody knew what to do with it. It's massive, one of the largest buildings in Broadmead. I can still remember going up the escalators to the top floor absolutely terrified staring out the enormous glass window. Well good news because plans have recently been revealed that they're going to knock down the entire building and they're going to replace it with a mixture of student accommodation and affordable homes. That's sure to encourage people to visit Broadmead. And the entire area will be chaos too whilst they replace one skyscraper with another skyscraper. Mayor Marvin Rees described this as extremely exciting. Next door to that you've got Primark. And I am not exaggerating, if this thing ever closes down that is the end of Broadmead. It's currently the main choice for affordable but fashionable clothing. People actually come to Broadmead just to use this shop. I can't help but think Primark are very slow to expand though, Western Superman Cribs calls we would love to have one. Because Primark is one of the only important shops in Broadmead, it's seen as the holy grail. People for 50 miles around talk about this shop, so that's good. But opposite that, we've got the old Marks and Spencer shop. This is where I get angry again. It has now reopened and it's called Sparks, but it's nothing to do with the old company. They've just chosen the name Sparks so that people don't notice that this is essentially an empty department store. Sparks is actually described as a hub for sustainability, creativity and education. Sounds like fun? It isn't. To call this a department store is a complete joke and it's just Bristol trying to make themselves look better. Oh, and push an agenda. Wind your way past some more crackheads and closed down shops, look at the lovely artwork of the hot air balloons covering the closed down shops and you arrive at Cabot Circus. Bristol's last hope. This was built 15 years ago and if that doesn't make you feel old, you must be related to Marvin Rees because you're in complete denial. I was interested to see how this place had been coping since the virus in the clean air zone. This was going to be the most telling part of my research. This was the area that anyone in power cares about the most. Overall there are still some famous clothing brands here and the place is still looking clean and modern, but something has changed. What happened to the jewellery shops? Well I guess Bristolian men can all breathe a sigh of relief, you're off the hook. But seriously I liked looking for gifts here and now it's all gone. That was one of the few things I would have ever visited Broadmead for. Of course, you've also got the closed down building where Topshop used to be, again that isn't Bristol's fault. But it's another huge building, and I can't find any answers for what this will eventually be. Probably flats or a hairdressers or something. Zara is one of the only shops that girls actually like in Bristol. I'm also told that new look is rubbish in Bristol and they aren't offering any new stock. Then you've got House of Fraser, I thought this had closed down. They planned to, but then they changed their mind. Luckily for Cabot it didn't close because this is three stories tall. You can expect this will be gone soon too though as the company is slowly shutting its stores down all over the UK. There are a few high end shops remaining here, but you can find much better in other cities. Which is basically the conclusion to all of this. It isn't worth coming here because it's expensive to visit, everything is really spread out, other places offer superior shopping, other places don't have aggressive homeless people harassing you, 
and Broadmead is just a depressing dump. I don't agree that high streets are doomed. Make them accessible, give people a reason to visit and attract some new brands to get the public excited. I am not against protecting the environment, but I am strongly against pushing agendas without offering solutions to the consequences of the agenda. I just can't help but think the clean air zone is affecting trade in Broadmead. I don't even know anyone who goes to Broadmead anymore, do you? My visit to Broadmead was interesting. It's definitely got worse since I last visited. The place isn't quite dead yet, but if they lost Primark or Zara, it would be the end of the road for Broadmead. There's still just about one or two shops left which are drawing people in. It used to be five or six shops. If Bristol continues this way, one day this whole area will be flats and student accommodation. And that's the video. We did something a bit different this week, but we're off to Wiltshire next week for an episode of Turd Town, so you've all got that to look forward to. Please share and comment on this video, it really helps us out. And let us know if you think high streets are doomed. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe to help Turd Towns thrive.